After a pretty insignificant off-season following a 2022 season which saw the Swans make yet another finals appearance under coach John Longmire, the Swans took a little bit of a step back in 2023, while yes, still making the finals but not advancing past week one, going down to the Blues and not wanting to make those same mistakes twice, they are already on the front foot, signing delisted free agents Joel Hamling and James Jordan from Fremantle and Melbourne respectively, while they've got a couple of former Magpies who they are looking at to get in the door. Is this all-in strategy going to work for the Swans? Are they doing the right thing by pursuing these guys as much as they are? And where does it make them stand for 2024 and beyond? Let's talk about all of it as the AFL trade period officially opens. So the race to 2,000 subs is on before draft day. We are so, so close. I need your help. So if you haven't done it, please do it already. And also, I hope that you have had a massive few days, no matter what you have been up to. And if things haven't looked great on the horizon for you, you absolute champion. I've got faith that things are going to turn around really, really, really soon. So I hope that maybe if things aren't going as well for you by the time you're watching this video, by the time the next one rolls around, I hope that that has done a complete 180 and you are back to your best because you deserve to be at your very best for 12 months of the year and fingers crossed that that happens for you. To the Swans though, and the James Jordan acquisition is an interesting one. Again, I look at these things as where do you fit in the best 22? It would seem very, very strange for James Jordan, a fringe player at Melbourne, to go and be a fringe player at the Swans. That seems very strange. Now, I don't think he's a midfielder uh, at all. I haven't seen it. Now, of course, Petrarca, Oliver, and Viney holding a monopoly over the Melbourne midfield may have stunted that in a way, but I've really loved how classy and polished he has looked on the outside of the contest. Could he and Justin McInerney be their wings for the foreseeable future? They really, really could, as Errol Goulden takes on a more inside-outside burst midfielder role, of which saw him claim a Bob Skilton medal by genuinely the length of Flemington Strait. If you haven't seen that leaderboard from the Swans BNF, it, it's almost comical, but it's how good he was. It's not a dig at the rest of Sydney's players. He was just that good. It was extraordinary, and I really like the Joel Hamling pickup as well. Whilst, yes, I still think they're in the centre-half back stakes when it comes to the draft, Ollie Murphy and Ari Schoenmaker are going to be guys that they are keeping a really, really close eye on. Joel Hamling is 30, after all, and was seen as an insurance piece for the Dockers. Now, could he be their round one key back alongside Tom McCartan? Yes, he could, and he probably needs to be given that Sydney did struggle at times last year to contain the key forwards. And of course, now with Paddy McCartan, unfortunately retiring, the spot is his. He's not really going to be overtaken by an 18-year-old kid, or at least from Sydney's point of view, even though I don't think it would be a huge hit to their salary, wouldn't want that to happen. You're bringing a guy across who was seen as the number three, number four on the depth chart in another club, who's hopefully going to be the number two on your depth chart. And that's where he'll be, regardless of how the Swans do the draft. So James Jordan on a wing, Joel Hamling at centre half back. Don't hate that so far. Uh, Taylor Adams, who of course is still at the Pies, has requested a trade. Now that may or may not go through at the time of recording. It hasn't gone through. So if anything changes with these things and you get in the comments and go, come on, Daz, you dickhead. Why well, didn't past you know the future and know what's coming? If things have changed, guys, it's because when I was recording, it hadn't changed yet. So just keep that in mind before you go to the comments, please. Okay. But Adams, again, more of an insurance depth piece. Where does he fit in that starting midfield? Could he and Luke Parker rotate that midfield half forward role? Well, if you're going to rotate in a midfield half forward role, wouldn't you just do that at the pies? You'd think, you know, greater opportunity for a guy who I think he's 31 or turning 31 very, very soon. With a three-year deal, now I get the security is going to be at the Swans until he's 34, or paid by the Swans until he's 34, I should say, unless something like an early payout happens, but we don't predict those things. But yeah, when you've got Golden, you've got Parker, I know Callum Mills is not really going to be there all that much. Could a guy like Ollie Florent get more midfield time? James Rowbottom, I'm forgetting guys as well, so don't stress about that at all. There are going to be plenty of Sydney players rolling through that midfield. I'm not sure round one, 2024, a fully fit Taylor Adams fits in that 
Sydney midfielder. They're hoping he can do kind of what Tom Mitchell did for the Pies last year, be that in and under grunt guy, feeding the ball out, letting Chad Warner and these guys get on the outside. That that definitely could work, but it's going to hurt the rotation of the younger guys. Is Taylor Adams in my Sydney Swans round one 2024 team fully fit? He could be, but, but it's not at the centre bounce. So I'm fascinated to see how that one plays out. And of course, Brody Grundy. They need a Ruckman. He's the best one available right now. Go and get him. Good. Honestly, good. Uh, it's about time. They need that extra midfielder. I think the way Grundy plays is going to suit the SCG genuinely beautifully. Not as much ground to cover, so he's going to be fresh off for longer in home games. Don't underestimate the factor that that can have. When you've got a Ruckman who could be genuinely good on the ground, it is going to help these late game moments. Sydney were genuinely bitched in the ruck by Mark Pitney and Tom DeConing in that final. They've seen the list hole. Look, we all did. But they've seen the list hole and they're correcting it. They're the only ones that can. And that's what they're doing. So the moves genuinely make sense. Some more than others, I would say. Grundy makes the most sense. Then Hamling. Then James Jordan. And then Taylor Adams. But it's not as if any of these don't make a semblance of sense. It's not as if any of these are, huh? What? What are you doing? It's not like that at all, which I give a big tick to. I was pretty critical of the Swans for not doing a whole lot in last year's trade period. If you're not first, you're last in this league. And I don't care that you got to a grand final. So many times we've seen teams get smacked in grand finals and then get nowhere. The Swans are young. They're building a good brand. Ironically, the way they play their footy does not suit the SCG at all, and it's kind of their home ground, which is a bit of a problem. But if they're able to continually improve internally, add these pieces from other clubs in, they're going to get to that contender status reasonably quickly. Now, the most important player, or players, I should say, at Sydney in 2024 and beyond are Logan McDonald and Hayden McLean. Their ability to not really rip games by the scruff of the neck enough so far has been a little bit of a problem. Has it been really encouraging? Of course it has, but you've got to score to win grand finals. Collingwood kicked 90 in a grand final. Yes, they'd kicked bugger all in the finals leading up to it, but on the last day in September to beat Brisbane, they had to score. 30 scoring shots, 90 points, got it done. Can Sydney kick 90 plus in a granny to get it done? Remains to be seen and it's up to those two. But the internal improvement is still going to hold the key to the flag. Those two tall forwards and Joel Amati and these guys are going to hold the key to Sydney's success. But to answer the question of the video, is Sydney's all-in strategy working or a good thing? Absolutely it is. Clubs need to have a crack. Like we say, if you're not first, you're last. And if you're last, you need to get your ass up the ladder. And Sydney are clearly identifying ways to do that. It's a year too late, but if their team looks better on paper, then last year's finish is not going to seem as disappointing if they can rebound up the ladder. I could be higher on the Swans, but their defense, I'm looking at and going... It's okay, it's good enough, can improve, everything can improve. I look at their midfield, even without Mills, and say, look, the potential there, that internal improvement, Chad Warner's going to need to make a jump. He and Errol Goulden have got a chance to be the best one-two punch midfield combo in the competition at some stage, and that needs to start kicking into effect reasonably quickly. They've got Papley as a small, I still think they're a small forward short, I might need to address that as well in this trade period or in the upcoming draft, but more about that in the next draft video. But those tools are a concern for me. They really, really are. They've got enough, I think, non-A grade talent to really make them a good team. They need their A grade talent to come through at the same time, and they need to be able to kick goals. But right now, I give Sydney a massive tick. You've got to try things. You've got to find the right ingredients to create. A premiership, yes. Collingwood have gotten some sort of fan jealousy. I'm not going to say criticism. Uh, the fact that they were able to walk the Dacos boys, even though no one bid on Josh and Darcy Moore, into the club via father-son. Sydney are going to have academy picks. They're going to get Caden Cleary in the academy as well. So they're going to be fine there. They've had the academy help in the past. Now it's up to you. Internal improvement. Learning the score. What can Sydney do to win themselves a flag? It is get the pieces in, get the team improving, 
rise up the ladder, and when push comes to shove, have avenues to score in order to win finals. But I'm a massive fan of what they're doing. What do you think about how Sydney are approaching this trade period? Comment below. Let me know. Do you think they're going to get uh, Grundy and Adams? Do you think a deal is going to get done there? Or if the deal is already done, why don't you react to it? in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to join the Daz Talks Footy family. 2K is so close, I can almost taste it. Another video coming to you Wednesday. Plenty of off-season stuff to come, so stick around. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you very, very soon. Goodbye.